Yeah. And that's an invaluable thing because ideas, where do they come from? I think I get my ideas from God. Not everyone believes in God. I do. My friend get ready for another exciting episode of Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Oh. Welcome back. We have a special guest today, Sophocles from Start Art. What's Woo. up, dude? How's it going? Going very good. We just wrapped up a three-day show at One Art Space Gallery. Art Vengers exhibition. Where's that Ventures. located again? One Art Space Gallery, 23 Warren Street, the heart of Tribeca, NYC, right off of Warren and Church Street on the corner next to Insomnia Cookies. Hey, not bad. Not mm -mm. bad. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good locale. How'd you, how'd you in that end up there? Well, I my first show I did there was called September Fest. It was back in 2018 of September, mm -hmm. and I was the the how I found that gallery was because I was looking for a new place to do shows. Because I was the vice president of the Greek Artists Guild back in the day, and we would do shows in a, a cultural Greek center that had like space for the different arts disciplines, but it was not a professional art space mm. for like art shows. You know, you, we could do table stuff and prop like canvases or photographs or whatever up against the wall from the table. You couldn't hang on the wall. Oh, so I was like, I need, I need something, you know, like something legit, like something that's good for like an art exhibition. Right. So I happened upon like somehow online, I don't know how I found it, but the Jack Kirby art exhibition, at one oh. art space gallery. And I, I I think you guys probably know who Jack Kirby is. But oh, yeah. He's introduced for the guests that might not know. He co-created the, uh, the Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Black Panther, and probably lots of other characters. When you break the Avengers <laughs> Damn near up, everything. Dude. Yeah. Yep. With Stan Lee. He, the yep. co he, co he designed them, and he drew the first stories of those characters. So that's, you know, I was like, okay, I got to see that. So I went there in the last 30 minutes. I met Diego, the then in-house cur uh, curator of One Art Space. Yeah. And I had been to Chelsea previously and I wanted to see if I could get my art and shows there or do like a group show there. And they were very rude to me. They were like, yeah, we don't look at submissions. <laughs> we don't look at art. Nope, Go nope, to Lower nope. East Side. We yeah. don't do that here. They were very rude. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's their job to be rude, right? Like their their whole thing is <laughs> <laughs> their whole thing is to like gatekeep uh, and, and keep out. Even when you go into galleries, that's a thing too. You always walk into a gallery and you're like, why is this person so mean to me? Why are they so rude? Why aren't they not looking at me? It's because they know you're just walking in off the street and uh, the people, all the stuff they do all day that actually makes some money is not like talking to people on the street. Yeah. You know, like people come in. I tell that to artists all the time because uh, you and me both, I think work with a lot of like emerging artists, mm -hmm. people who are just starting out. They don't really know what they're doing, where to go. And uh, something I tell them all the time is, well, don't go arm and fist uh, with a portfolio to <laughs> galleries. Don't yeah. do that because they'll just like they'll just kick you out. Uh, they, you know, ask them if they have a submission policy. Exactly. Follow, follow that policy very carefully. It's yeah. crazy what turns off curators. I think a lot of curators will like see, you know, just a something like a file titled the wrong way. Like they didn't, they didn't, you know, <laughs> they didn't go with my uh, file naming schema. And then that's like enough to get your ass booted. So, you know, watch out. Yeah, autocorrect, gotcha, right? That's so. right. Do you follow, like, the normal art world uh, at all, like, very much? Because I feel like a lot of your stuff's kind of uh, on the fringes, comic stuff. You know, you got that Jack Kirby thing. Yeah, I, uh, I I do my best to keep up. I, I'm, I you know, I, I put a lot of time and effort into the shows I do. They're usually three-month or four-month projects. Yeah. So I a lot of my time goes wrapped up into making sure those artists are taken care of. That's and important. that they're really, um, they're seen. You know, we do IG lives with them. I repost content in collaboration posts on our feed directly to our feed. Right. Each artist can do multiple posts to feed as long as it relates to their art or the show of some in some way uh, to stories. I, I find creative ways to try to market them. Uh, we even uh, our shows are we, we take fees to, for the artists that be in the shows, but we they keep 100 percent of the money that they earn from all sales of their art. Oh. And we reinvest uh, a, a chunk of that portion into marketing and, you know, like um, promotion on Instagram with sponsored ads and, you know, right. like uh, things like artcards.cc, that website. It's not expensive to put anything on I'm sure the venue CC, wants a cut too. Yeah. And that's got to be a lot of it. Yeah. There's, there's rent for the venue. So, you know, Oof. I can't, um, it's in Tribeca. It's a three day show. So 
you know, like I, I can't just do percentages and just hope for the best because then I'm right. Like, I might end up in like big time in the red. So that's why I do that. But it's a great way to get artists like who are green to the scene in the scene and seen by, you know, like the local New York locale. And yeah, you know, at the last show that we just did, we broke a record in terms of how many sales we had around 130 sales. If you combine. Oh, wow. Awesome. The, yeah. If you combine, how many artists did you have involved in that show? There was a uh, 41 artists. Yeah. Was a, nice. Yeah. It was pretty good. And um, yeah, we had around 130 sales. Were a lot of those sales landscapes. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it was a mixture of uh, sales off the t walls, tables, and print racks. Right. And there was a magazine release of Blue Calf issue two of New York City Stories, which is like a fundraising issue for Blue Calf. Shout out to Blue Pablo of uh, Blue Calf fame, uh, the editor and CEO. And uh, he sold out his entire run of magazines that he printed for the show oh, very in cool. one night in a few hours. That um, is very cool. Yeah, so... You know that that definitely helped with the the sales number, but there was also lots of uh, originals that sold, prints, jewelry. I sold comic books. I sold yeah. some prints. You're well, selling it wife. all. Yeah, we. Well, you really are selling it, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about and then have sure. you on to discuss because, like, uh, the way we do stuff here at, at Solus is like similar, but we're <laughs> always trying to avoid taking the feet of show because yeah. there is this kind of like you know. Uh, stigma of what's called a vanity gallery here true, and true. vanity galleries are not quite what you're doing i think which is uh why i think it, what you're doing is actually pretty impressive because you're you you're putting in some work yeah you're actually out there you're actually like i see these videos that you like hyping up the artists at the shows <laughs> you know yeah. getting the audience involved like making a big deal when the sale happens like you know making sure everyone knows that they're there to buy art and then, you know, they can do that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these other places will just take like a few hundred bucks off an artist and then like throw them up and then barely even post it online or like not do anything. Yeah. It's crazy how, how many places don't do fucking anything. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, that's a I shame. I won't name names. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like, I don't like um, naming names either. It's a shame that that happens and it happens a lot. Unfortunately, in some places, even, charge a fee and take commission. Oh yeah. I've seen that. That's like, you know, like too. a 30% commission and like a yeah. um, hundred dollar or more fee or right. whatever the combination of it is. I try not to do that. We, we have our own strategy or our own method and that's just taking the upfront fee. We let the artist know there's a fee in advance. You know, we have it, uh, the fees in our caption of the call for artist post. A lot of the artists don't read the caption of the call for artist post. <laughs> then they get upset later or they just leave me on scene when I tell them there's a fee. But I'm like, you know what? It's transparent. It's there. You just got to read the caption. Right. Oh, you, you know? put it in the so caption. We put it in the caption and we sponsor the post so that, you know, we get like the traffic on Instagram to artists that see it around the world uh, and in the New York area and in the States. Um, it was cool because in this show we had a few artists from uh, out of country. We had... Two artists from Brazil, uh, my wife and Menina Inga underscore, who's a new artist we've worked with. And um, she is autistic and she reached out to me and she wanted to try to get her art out there because she saw what I was doing and I wanted to help her. Uh, so I, you know, I let her have like video space in the show. We have a screen for free. Uh, does so video I art? to help her out. Yeah. Well, no, she, she not video art, but she's a painter hmm. or an illustrator. And I just make a master video with like, you know, like for the screen. So you're not showing originals because yeah. it's hard for them to ship it and spend money. And oh, the, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in America, our currency is five times more valuable than um, hey ice right. in Brazil. So it, it would be more a lot Extra more expensive, expensive than it really actually would be for an American to show art on the screen. If on the show, in this show, the show art on the screen was only $75 and you get 30 seconds of loop time for the entire show. There's mm -hmm. other artists on the screen as well. But it wasn't many. The whole video was that like three sounds, minutes long. So. That sounds like a, a lot of these NFT shows I've seen. Like they're doing that when they're all screens. They got nothing but screen space to show. Yeah. And so it's pretty interesting. I want to know how you uh, got into doing this, how you got into kind of being on the other side of the aisle. Because I think when we met like years and years and years ago, mm -hmm. you were doing like your comic book stuff. You're yeah. running around promoting your comic books. Yeah. Doing your art and stuff. And then like I feel like, you know, you're around, I kind of maybe see you on IG once in a while, but mm -hmm. then years later you like pop up like in a suit with dots, <laughs> selling work online. And I'm like, well, I remember this guy. What the, what the heck? So what happened in between that time? Like where, how did, where, how did you get to the, the journey of being the curator and, and starting this company? Well, the, the transformation into captain curator as I nicknamed myself for the art Avengers is my art Avenger name, uh, into the suit happened because I read, um, think big, I think it's called, um, 
think big or dream big, something like that. Um, it's it's a famous book that's like a self help book. Oh, um, for many people have read that book, like uh, the, like the secret. Uh, well, well, it's it's like one of those motivational books. True, like it's not maybe not exactly like the secret, but it's it's good like that. And it said that it's better to have a smaller wardrobe than to and with quality clothing and dress like you know well. I'm not saying like you always have to dress in a suit, but dress well. And to have like a million like closets full of how many suits you, know, you like, got? <laughs> I, I don't have like too many suits. I may, maybe I have like maybe like four or five. Uh, That's a good number. Probably, you need, yeah, you like, need the, like the basics, like three to five maybe. Um, but I have different shirts and different tie combinations, so I can like mix it up, you know. So I, I don't always yeah. have to buy a new suit for every occasion. Um, but I, I kind of hate that about the male fashion stuff, though. Like about uh, suits and ties. It's like ties are like the only thing we get. <laughs> to express ourselves with, right? Yeah, it was bow ties too. If you want to be like, you know, Sean Connery and James Bond or something. Oh, hell but, yeah. Yeah, but um, I, I love a good old Sean Connery. Ah, but what was yeah. the first, like, what was the first show you did? Um, like, like that first, you put together, that you organized? Um, the first one in in a gallery setting, at least. I'll just start from there because, sure. you know, that's like more like where the legacy began is um, Septemberfest is where I met my wife. She was, she came all the way from Brazil she was following me from hashtags and so she liked my art. She found me from hashtags. That's how she found my page. At the time it was Sofo Tunes. Well, Sofo, Sofo, she, Sofo, she had you at hashtags. She, she found <laughs> me through hashtags because she likes comics. That's wild when you can find our partners through hashtags. Yeah, yeah. But at the time, you know, she was just a featured artist in the show. We didn't know each other personally. And at the time, my Instagram was Sophocles.art. Then I changed it to Sophotunes and it got hacked. And now I can't use that Instagram anymore. Oh, shit. Now I have Farm Boy Story. And I'm happy with that. I was wondering about full. Farm Boy Story. That's the name of your comic, right? Or one yeah, of them? Farm Boy is the name of my comic. That's Farm right. Boy, yeah. That's right. And she was a featured artist in the show. And then she came to drop off. And I love telling this story. And she always like is like, <laughs> don't tell the story. But she had to drop <laughs> nice. off. And she gave me a kiss on the cheek. Because in, in Brazil, it's a co like, co like courtesy, not courtesy, but a custom to like, you know, like greet someone that obviously you're not going to greet someone that you don't like like that, but someone that, you know, like that you meet and that, you know, not like like like, but that you have some rapport with. Yeah, with I think it's like cheek. a handshake. But it's for me, I'm like I'm a New Yorker, country. right? So I'm like, oh, you're okay, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. Took yeah. Out. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. So and she was very pretty. So I was like, okay. So at the show, she bought my Subway Stories book for me. It's it's on Amazon, by the way. Um, and um, she she was very friendly, and I was like, <laughs> she was always smiling at me, and I was smiling at her. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna ask her out. So I asked her out. We went to a, one art space for a photo exhibition. We went around the corner to, um, I forget the name of the spot. The restaurant is closed down since then, unfortunately. Oh. Like, yeah, it's a shame because that's where we went on the first date. And then I, actually I took her to jump into the light after, which no longer oh, exists. Yeah, jump into the I light. Did. It was game night and it was epic. Like, but Dude, I didn't know she epic. liked games. So I asked her for someone, do you like video games? And it was like a shot in the dark because, yeah. you know, not, not, I, like there's the plenty of girl. girls like games, but not every girl likes games. So I just tried. I was like, do you like video games? She's like, yeah, I was like, perfect. So, you know, we got in a cab, we went to jump, we started playing video games and she's beating me in the video games. I'm like, damn, okay. And I used to play video games when I was a kid a lot. So I was yeah. like, this is pretty cool. That, she that likes got comics. you smitten, right? Exactly. That got you she smitten. likes comics. She likes art. She's a talented artist herself, an oil paint, uh, acrylic painter. She uh, can beat me in video games. She didn't beat me in all of them. I won in... Street Fighter a little bit and in Super Smash Bros. I destroyed her. So, you know, like that was my game back in the day. <laughs> oh, you're a Smash Brothers yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. I like the one for Melee, GameCube. Huh? The well, one Melee. GameCube was the best one in my opinion. Street well, Fighter no. 2. Actually, Street Fighter 2. And, 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 have you ever, and Soul Calibur. Have you ever seen oh, that, that documentary movie about the street, about the uh, Super Smash Brothers uh, tournament? The official, like, you know. No, the, I have not. What is it called? Oh, my God. I got to find out. I'm going to blank right now, but I'll put it in the description if I can. Sure, sure. Uh, but it, there's this great documentary that follows this group of friends playing Smash Smash Brothers Melee, and um, they got so popular that they ended up becoming the biggest draw in this huge like gaming tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had to because they were playing Melee, because all the ones that came after that were not as fast, were not as like technical. Oh, really? So yeah, so they kept like you can find a Smash Brothers like later on versions of it, but Melee kept showing up in these tournaments, even yeah. though it was older game. It's, it's a good one. They had to bring in CT CRT monitors. Cause there's like a slight delay over uh, LCD and, and HDMI. <laughs> so they're bringing in like these big square old ass monitors uh -huh. and they're, they're playing this old game 
And it follows these kids all the way down from like their garage to like million dollar contracts, you know. That's you know, awesome. Getting paid million dollars for Super Smash Bros. Sign me up. I know, right? I know, right? I'll, I'll use DK Super Punch all day long and I'll roll around <laughs> on you and, 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 and commit suicide off the level with you if I have more lives than you. So oh, that I you're can brutal. defeat you oh, like you, that. Oh, yeah, like, that, was, that, was, that was my style. So did, you, did you used to hit people out of the ring in Soul Calibur? Uh, yeah, I, I would oh, play. Man. I had a game on GameCube and I would play with Link because I liked Link. He was... He was a pretty cheesy character because he had the projectiles too, but yeah. uh, he was like my, Ness, my guy. I'm a NES player. Nice. I consider video games art. I think that they video are. games are some of the highest form of art that exists because they combine all different kinds of stuff together into one. And great storytelling if it's a good game too. That's right. Storytelling, yeah. writing, everything's there. Let's see here. Let me look at my Blackberry. Why do you sound like you're in a tin can, Morgan? <laughs> I am in a tin can. Does that sound better? <laughs> yeah, it's a little better. There's one Get thing people know about me. It's me and my tin cans. Any Anything catching your attention lately? Stuff like these from like art news? Shirk. Sure. Art sort news. Of. Let's yeah. see. How about the AI, uh, the AI revolution in like meta, like training uh, their platform to look at artists, art, and train AI by like taking artist art to train it. So oh, like, the story. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pretty big thing in the news right now. And artists are pure yeah. about that. Oh, and the Adobe. Platform. Adobe just got like a bunch of shit because they threw that in their new agreement where they're like, we can use your shit to train our AIs, and they said they weren't going to do that, and then they and did, they did it. And I I'd like, oh, feel it. honored. They can steal all my shit. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I kind of feel ahead. like that too, but. I Some think, artists are kind of against it. Like, I feel yeah. like what I do is unique enough that no one's going to really take it to like monetize it or anything. Hopefully not knock on wood, but yeah. you know, like, you know, I don't know. Um, the, some artists are not really against it and I can see why, you know, yeah. like, but there's another, actually another like social media platform that popped up. I forget what it's called, but people are kind of like leaving Instagram or maybe not using Instagram as much to use the new one. And I mm. forget what it's called. I, I'm what? blanking on well, it right that's now. That's why it's going to fail. Oh. Yeah, I was just about to say, if you can't remember it, it ain't going nowhere. Well, I think the whole um, AI versus art versus, like artist versus AI art is interesting. And it's been going on for a while now. It's like, it's sort of old news at this point. And for yeah. a while, there was a bunch of talk about, I don't think it was Behance, but I think it was another one, ArtStation. It was ArtStation. So ArtStation is like a portfolio website where you can have, uh, and there was this, this all this speculation that they were drudging um, ArtStation for in, for training their models, but they weren't, uh, or they claimed they weren't, and there wasn't any real proof that they were. Uh, but all these people on ArtStation started making these protests where they would be like, "No AI!" Like just put up this image of AI with a big no through it. Yeah. Uh, so all of ArtStation's stuff for a while was just like tons of no AI stuff. And the thing that I saw that I thought was fucking hilarious was this artist on Twitter who's like. Uh, an AI artist who like mainly uses AI or other kinds of uh, image generating algorithms um, and does, and does like portfolios, like portraits and stuff. Uh, he started like feeding it purposefully like red stripes and, and text <laughs> to make AI stuff that looked like it had like snuck in there trying to be like, you know, he was saying like, uh, Oh no, the protest has gotten to my shit and now I can't make my art anymore because everyone's protesting. And everyone's like, see, this is proof that they were stealing it off art station. <laughs> but in reality, he was just messing with everybody. And, oh, wow. and that story ran hard. Like everyone was like showing it like this is proof that they're they're training on art station. And uh, I don't think they they weren't actually. Uh, but that shit was funny. And it, it's creating new kinds of artists as well. But I don't know. Morgan, is there any good headlines? Do you find any good ones? Mm. No, nothing going on. Yeah, you said something about Netflix, right? Netflix co-founder to transform Utah ski resort into an outdoor art park. Wee hoo! Outdoor art park. Tell yeah, us Netflix. more about that. I want to know what kind of art they're showing, like sculptures, or what are they doing? It sounds like they want to make another Meow Wolf. You know Meow Wolf? No, I do not. Oh, you gotta wow. check out Meow no, Wolf. No, talk about Meow Wolf. That's way cooler than what this is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Meow Wolf in Vegas. It was really interesting. Uh, yeah. It's like this supermarket where they have all these different artists make different products that are not like I don't even remember. That's if just the supermarket portion of it. They yeah, are. no, it's way bigger. They it's are. like the, you can go on and search for the, a missing employee. Right. And it's yeah. It's so uh, Meow like a giant interactive art experience. It's similar to like those selfie museums you see popping up everywhere, like the Museum of Ice Cream and all these other ones that <laughs> that just basically are giant selfie booths. You know, that's like all they are. They they say they're installation art. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess they are. No, but a lot of the rooms would like had. But, but Meow is but like that, but cooler. They have right? interactive they have more stuff. stuff. You can make music. 
like with lights. They got huge evaluation too. Shit. Meow, Meow Wolf got like a multi, multi, multi million dollar evaluation and opened up a couple more branches. So that, they got the money cool. from the guy who made uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, from really? uh, Jar Jar Romero? Yeah, he gave author? him like a few mil. Yeah, I that's think. sick. That's sick. Uh, that that is really cool, and that brings up the point where, like, you know, this country does not fund the arts at all, like with tax player done. I mean, they do, but you glue and macaroni on a plate with kids in the summer park. You, you know, you might get your program funded, but they do not like care about funding adult artwork. So we we have to turn to our corporate overlords and hope that the Netflix art park is going to be lit. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, that's just one way to do it. Um, but yeah. It, it it is really a thing where the scenes in the city are kind of so subdivided and so like insular amongst themselves. There's like the really high end artwork as a um, as an investment vehicle mm-hmm. sect, and then you've got like different galleries focusing on different sorts of kinds of artwork, you know. And and then you're picking up a lot of slack here. You got your own little scene, kind of like you know, start art seems to be its own thing. Yeah, yeah. Start shows has formed the community over. The, this has been our 19th show at One Art Space since wow. 2018. Yay. Um, not all of them were with start shows, but I before I started start shows with my wife in 2019, a year after I started, I did my first show there. Uh, we I did some shows with a couple other curators, but. After a while, I just my wife was like, "Why don't we do something just you and me, and we make a formal company out of it?" And I thought it was a good idea because, you know, like I, I felt like it's my wife, so we can work harmoniously and save time instead of like going back and forth over the phone or whatever. Yeah, and it was a good venture because we've helped hundreds of artists now. Maybe over, I don't even know if it's over a thousand, but hundreds of artists exhibit. Obviously, not all of those artists have sold at the shows, but a good portion of them have sold at the shows as well. Yeah. And they've con- been uh, introduced to many connections. And I even tell them, if you've even been in our show even once, if you tag us in stories, yeah, I'll, if it's related to art or the, show, or the show you did or art or even like another opportunity, even if it's someone else's show that you're doing, mm. I'll repost it in stories, even if you only did our show once and you're not like the current in the current show. Right. And, you know, I'm always trying to find ways that I can help the community of artists even more and even when if they like artists that have never done a show with me like i might not like post like every artist that asked me to whatever because like then i'd be posting all day long yeah but i try to i try to help the community out in the best that i can and we formed our own little community i wouldn't say it's a collective maybe it's like a hybrid of a community and a collective but same here at Solus a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know it's 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 a it's a good it's a good thing, and I'm I'm very proud to have formed like sort of like a legacy in Tribeca over there already, and people know me there, and they're like family to me, so I appreciate that. Yeah, that's so cool to hear. You know, yeah. that is true. Uh, do you have any kind of curatorial process? Like, you know, who doesn't get into a star show? Is, is there is there a bar? Or are you kind of just hoping to be? Uh, a first step for everybody. Oh, well, I want to be a first step for everybody, but there's certain like in terms because our, our the art that we show is visual art, right? So there's certain um, imagery in art that we do not accept. Like if mm. it's like uh, you, like unless I like like we usually ask the artist to show us three to five images of art, uh, and then we get a taste for the art they want to show in the show, and then sometimes they have more than that. So yeah. You know, like sometimes I might get surprised and they bring something to the show that like I maybe wouldn't have like approved. And, you know, I if it's like obviously it's already like time to install, then I just bite the bullet. But I, you know, I try to make sure that the art doesn't have like swear words in it that are like, you know, like R rated swear, swear oh, words or anything. So it's family friendly. Family friendly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 That way it encourages, you know, the whole family to come out and there's larger turnout. So the artists have more chances to sell, more chances to connect and meet people. Uh, graphic imagery of like, you know, like a sexual nature. Like I, I usually don't show that if it's like really like in your face, like nudity, not all yeah. nudity. Cause you know, nudes are a part of art. That's like a classical form of art, but you know that there's that too. hate speech. Obviously I'm not going to show that. Like right. who's going to show that, you know, maybe some people would, but I, we don't show some it. Some people definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, like if it's like, uh, like overtly, like gratuitously violent imagery yeah. like that too. And drug content. We don't, those uh-huh. are, those are usually the things we don't show, but try to keep it family friendly because then, you know, the artists can bring their families to the show, but and, no you know, bar on like what is good or not. No, no, no. Yeah. We don't, any skill level is welcome. Even if it's like really, 
I'm not going to say amateur artists. I'm just going to say like emerging, like beginner artists. You yeah, know, like, it's like we're kind of never out of the emerging phase unless you've like really made it right. It's like we're always true, growing as true, artists true, and always changing. True. But even if they're like a novice in the art world or like drawing, like like they're new to it or painting, I, I won't turn them down. Why? Because they can learn techniques from the other artists in the show. That's and that beautiful. can help them grow. They can make connections that can take them to the next level so of you their e career. You would even show Morgan's art. I have yeah, shown Morgan's yeah, art. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, I've shown wild, Warren. Yeah, Warren, yeah. It, it's a beautiful space to show work. I, I advise everyone to pay attention to the uh, Instagram. And what is the Instagram again? Start shows. Oh, yeah. you mean of the gallery or my my well, Instagram? Well, both, I guess. Okay, start shows is our Instagram. The gal the gallery's Instagram is one the the word one, not the number one. Yeah. O N E one art space, yeah. and they've been there for like fifteen years now. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, they're actually a longer than that. I thought they were older, but I, I that think makes it's sense. around fourteen, fifteen years. It makes sense. I think I yeah. first started becoming aware of it like right after I had uh, started actually doing stuff in the art professionally mm -hmm. in New York, and I, I was here for a few years before that. Yeah, uh, just just hammering it out in the coffee mills, making people's lattes, which sometimes I miss. You know, it is a lot, right? Like organizing artists is like uh, herding cats. Um, it's not hurting cats, but it is a lot of work. Um, because if you have like, uh, sometimes we have, you know, like 40 to 50 artist shows, something like that. And that's 40 personalities that you have to make sure that you, you make them feel honored and, and, and special and that you, you take care of them, especially right. since they're paying to be in the show. So you, you know, you don't. You like I I don't know about every. That's true. every it's an exhausting every, job. It's every, an exhausting job. It can be, but it's very rewarding. It depends on the personality. It's not for everyone, you know. Like a lot of people want to like have their own event because they want to be the head honcho. They want to show right. their art in a nice space. They want to be in the front of the gallery, whatever. Um, that's not what I want to do in this show. Yes, me and Tyce's art were in the front, but um, usually we end up having a space that's not oh, in the front when we give the artists the prime. <laughs> like uh space i just had some awesome pieces i wanted to show and i that's why i placed myself in the front but um <laughs> you sound a little defensive okay there we go, there we go. no but I, I i promise you like the majority of the shows like like a lot of times i was in the, the very back of the gallery and yeah, only yeah. when i really have like a good amount of space to fill yeah do i have like a large space and sometimes i even just have on tables and that's not the best way to show like originals of next, artwork art, on tables, next art show i just want to have one piece in the bathroom I've definitely had that experience too. And like as an artist who's trying to get shows in the city, it's like, you know, when you go in there and they put your stuff in the back and the person yeah. running, it's like, oh man, this sucks. Uh, but I, I've ever, I've also kind of like taken, I've done the same thing where I've like tried to take my, uh, my, give myself the back foot. You yeah. know, like I'll put, if I'm going to be participating in something I'm organizing, I yeah. tend to like shove myself in the back now or try not to show it at all. And then, Sometimes people will be like, hey, you should put that up front. This is good. Like, put it up front. So it's nice to have other people to bounce stuff off of. It is. You know? It is. And, you know, like, since since I'm also renting the gallery to do the show, it's a shame if I don't, like, give my art a chance in the spotlight because I'm an artist, too. And, like, that's, like, my home base now. So that's it was sick. cool. It's a sick home base, dude. Everyone should check it out. Tell yeah. people where they can find it. Sure. Uh, on, online or? Online. Where's their Insta? Okay. My Insta, my art is Farm Boy Story. That's F-A-R-M-B-O-Y-S-T-O-R-Y. And uh, tell us where we can follow the uh, Start Art Company. Start Show. I keep calling it Start Art, but Start Shows, isn't it? It's Start Shows. Yeah, you can follow Start Shows. Our main platform is Instagram. It's just start, like start an engine of a car, S-T-A-R-T, -T, or start your art. And then uh, shows, like art show with the Ness at the end, S-H-O-W-S on Instagram. I have a Facebook too for it. I don't really check it as often because Instagram is more where it's at. We have a TikTok too, but I don't really use that as oh, often. TikTok. And a Twitter too, but I don't really use that as often. So Instagram is the main spot. We also have a website, startshowsnyc.com. And it has more information about what me and Thais have accomplished over the years and what we what we do as a company. Very cool. Thank nice. you for joining us. Thank this you. has been Lucky Time Explosion, the free show on uh, YouTube and uh, yeah. everywhere else you're listening to. We also have a website as well, LuckyTimeExplosion.com. And stick around or check us out on Patreon and stick around if you're a patron because we're going to be getting into the second half, which is exclusive to patrons. Mm. Go check it out. A lot of good goodies, merch, and extra content on there. So. Let's make the magic hands. Now we're, in, now we're in the now we're in the second half of the show. This is where you can curse if you want. My 
friend, I'll get it.